Hello, from wherever you are watching, this is the President's Diary. Coming up in this program, His Excellency President Adam Abaro traveled to Nigeria, Abuja, where he joined other West African leaders for the 55th edition of the ECOWAS Heads of State and Government Summit. At the Abuja meeting, President Barrow, on behalf of the Gambia government, signed several ECOWAS legal instruments, including the tourism policy, the declaration against child marriage, and the ECOWAS model on mining and mineral development. Once again, this is the President's Diary, a monthly television program that highlights the activities of the President. My name is Mfali Fadera. And I am Zena Fal. Thank you for the pleasure of your company. Also coming up, in July, President Adam Baro attended the African Union Heads of State and Government Summit in Nyani, Niger. Behind closed doors, President Adam Baro participated in the deliberations of the plenary session of the summit. His intervention also centered on the need for AU leaders to commit to the implementation of the Africa Free Continental Trade Agreement to transform their economies. He stressed the urgency in working collectively to overcome the barriers and challenges confronting Africa trade and commerce. Nevertheless, President Barrow also pointed out that the Gambia government was considerate of the unintended consequences of the special trade agreement on domestic economies. Thus, he expressed his government's support for regulating goods coming from the special economic zones. The summit was considered as a key event that showed a strong political commitment by African leaders to the implementation of the Africa Free Trade Agreement. The Free Trade Agreement will remove tariffs between member countries of the AU. From that story where Africans are commended for coming together, uniting to tackle the problems that the continent is faced with. Finally, we have seen in recent times that President Barrow has been traveling, meeting with world leaders, meeting with global policymakers. And uh, just last month, he traveled to the United Arab Emirates where he met with the Crown Prince. You traveled with the delegation. How was this trip like and what are some of the benefits that that um, the delegation came home with? Thank you, Zainab. As you rightly pointed out, the president um, did travel to the United Arab Emirates and it was a very successful meeting. Uh, he met with the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and the two leaders uh, discussed um, the state of bilateral cooperation between the Gambia and Abu Dhabi. And they also agreed um, to explore ways and means of strengthening the um, existing ties between the two countries. President Barrow, apart from meeting the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, he also met with strategic business and development partners, um, among them the Abu Dhabi Chamber of Commerce, uh, which represents more than 120,000 businesses in the uh, Emirate. He also met with the Abu Dhabi Fund for International Development. This is the international development arm of the UAE government. All these uh, meetings were very, very successful, and um, they all promised to explore opportunities in working with the government of the Gambia. Uh, part of the activities of the presidential delegation in Abu Dhabi was uh, that the ministers also had a very successful side meetings and they signed a lot of um, international, a lot of cooperation agreement with the government of Abu Dhabi. Okay, talking about the MOU, Sumfali, one very important one that a lot of people in Gambia and even outside the Gambia and beyond uh, welcomed is the legal protection agreement that was signed between the Gambia and the UAE. What does this entail? Um, the legal protection agreement was more like uh, a memorandum of understanding between um, the two governments in the area of manpower supply. So what this entails is that um, the government of the Gambia is going to work in close collaboration with the government of the UAE um, to recruit and supply um, um, human resources from the Gambia to go people that are interested to work in the uh, United Arab Emirates. But the good thing about this legal protection framework is that it's going to provide a legal cover for people that are interested to work in the Emirates. Because often we will hear reports of people being exploited. Uh, we have shady employment agencies that will exploit um, people's vulnerabilities, um, take them and then put them in very dire um, um, labor conditions in, in, in the Middle East. So this is the significant part of this legal protection agreement. It's going to help protect Gambians that are interested to seek jobs 
in the United Arab Emirates. Generally, it was a very successful trip um, for the presidential delegation. Um, apart from the meeting with the Crown Prince, where the two leaders um, renewed their commitment to strengthen the bilateral cooperation between the two governments, we also saw a memorandum of understanding. We also saw MOU signed between the two countries. The Minister of Finance also signed a memorandum of um, understanding with his counterpart, um, which was about um, investment protection and also a double taxation treaty. They discuss things along this line. Like I pointed out already, um, there are specific action plans that um, they have identified and have expressed commitment to working on them. In fact, they are going to send a follow-up team from Abu Dhabi to come and work with a team from the Gambia to make sure that all these um, pledges and all these commitments um, are followed through. Um, the United Arab Emirates government also has agreed to support the Gambia's bid to successfully host the 2022 OIC um, heads of state summit um, which is scheduled to take place in the Gambia. So it was a very successful trip by all measure. Um, before I conclude I would also like to point out that the president also had a successful meeting um, with the Gambian community in Abu Dhabi. Um, this is a customary practice for the president wherever he traveled he would explore ways and means of engaging with the, the Gambian diaspora and he had a similar meeting in Abu Dhabi and the meeting was a very successful one. Um, the people that spoke there um, you know, express gratitude to the government for um, establishing a diplomatic mission in Abu Dhabi, considering the fact that we are having an incremental um, number of Gambians settling in the UAE and that part of the country. All right, Mfali, uh, it is important to also add, in addition to the MOUs that were signed and the very fruitful discussions that um, the two leaders held, the UAE also played to support Gambia's bid uh, for the hosting of the OIC summit in 2022. Yes, Zainab, um, it's important to um, highlight this. Um, as it relates to the OIC, the UAE has agreed to help the Gambia uh, in its preparatory efforts um, in the forms of um, um, providing VIP cars for the guests, but also to help with um, improving the facilities at the international airport. They want to help the Gambia to be able to have more parking space for aircrafts that will um, um, come during this busy time, but also they want to help the Gambia with ground handling equipment um, so that um, they can carry out um, um, air traffic and transportation um, as smoothly as possible. <laughs>
having witnessed the historic moments and Gambia's transition to democracy and the way forward for Gambia-Canada relations. Canada has been working alongside with the Gambia to uh, help with building and consolidating um, uh, institutions, democratic institutions. Uh, we've been collaborating with the Ministry of Justice, for example. Uh, there was a recent visit of the Peace Building Fund and Canada was part of it. Uh, we are uh, we provide support to the Peace Building Fund and we also are very pleased uh, to be able to collaborate with the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission, especially in the area of uh, uh, gender-based uh, violence. Also to bid farewell to President Adamoro at the State House in Banjul was the Dakar-based ambassador of France to the Gambia. President Baro had nothing but kind words for the excellent cooperation and friendship between France and the Gambia over the past two years, thanks to the work of Ambassador Bigot. The President expressed his determination to further strengthen relations between France and the European Union in the spirit of the new democracy in the Gambia. Gambia is a new and very young democracy. It needs to be uh, protected. Uh, security needs to be ensured. And that's why we have uh, promoted a training, training of the police uh, intervention unit. I was there uh, with the uh, NSA, National Security Advisor, on Friday for the closure of a two weeks training with two uh, French policemen coming here to train fully for police uh, uh, intervention unit officers. That, of course, is only a first step. On my side also, I forgot to mention it, but it's important in terms of diplomacy. There was no, nobody uh, left here uh, from the French uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we decided to reopen a diplomatic antenna on Atlantic Road and to appoint a chargé d'affaires, who was before ambassador to Liberia. So he's a well-trained and well-educated uh, uh, diplomat. In July, the new ambassador of Saudi Arabia to the Gambia, His Excellency Al Dusari Fahad, presented his letters of credence to the president at the State House in Banjul. The diplomatic representative of the King of Saudi Arabia and the custodian of the two holy mosques played to work towards strengthening the relations between Banjul and Ria. Already 92.5 million US dollars has been provided by the Saudi government towards the financing of the forthcoming OIC summit to be held in the Gambia in 2022. The executive director of the Africa Intelligence and Security Services, CISA, led a delegation to the State House in Bandu to meet with President Baro and to express their satisfaction with the level of support that they continue to receive from him. CISA is a body that provides assistance to the African Union leaders in areas of security and intelligence with the aim of strengthening capacity and fostering stability on the continent. Mr. Simayat said he was impressed with the operation and professionalism of SIS, the State Intelligence Services of the Gambia and the democratization that is currently taking place in the country. President Baru, during a closed-door meeting, said bringing together security and intelligence services is important and needs support. He expressed commitment to supporting CISA in its endeavor to maintain peace and stability in the continent. Let's take a look at the National Women Councillors meeting with President Baru at the State House in Bandu, where he vowed to continue pursuing socio-economic advancement of women as enshrined in the National Development Plan. Well, the Minister Fulol, Melia Longko, Ila Doku Obe Mumus Doku Donet, Ila Balu Obekon. Now, Vice President, Activist Lemati. What on the Musolmil 
Quand ils musolent tombent, qu'est-ce qu'ils placent Je te dis mal le dire. Il y a qui a des conditions ni bien dans le nom de la passoire. La passoire au lit. Fongagnil tombe. Mon ami Asa bon y est tombe. Kunum y est doko meng. Voilà qui n'est tombe bien bien place au lit. On a connu comment d'abord. Moi le balou. Vous la connu la records. Il y a 14 ans, il y a 14 ans. Il y a 14 ans, il y a 14 ans. Il y a 14 ans, il y a 14 ans. Having two women in cabinet as ministers, coupled with a woman vice president, will greatly contribute to the advancement of women empowerment. I was in the city of Tanzania. I was in the city of Tanzania. Dia mau mangkino, mau hani befala, be be kuta mata kolong mingkono, be batam mingkono, no mila tan tol be kan numbeng alon eh hani ma fonyoi, for one thing, numbeng alon eh kar ngam rali entol jeleng ngulo kono tan tan tali, mau be tata anata, bari bi be siring, masake be siring, be nadi anye ku fly, alhamdulillah, 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 numbeng tan tol follow follow wala, waton tol musol. Mufkuma la falo la ali ala kumu mimi mfunga mo la ala bata bunda tu abe mu tonya leti abe. To wrap up this episode of the president's diary, let's take a look at the historic visit of the president of India to the Gambia, Mr. Ramnath Kovin. Mfali, can you give us a summary of? Mr. Coven's visit in the Gambia and what were some of the key um, issues that were discussed at the presidency level? Thank you very much, Zainab. Um, the President of India, Ramnath Coven, um, had a three-day official visit to the Gambia. And during this visit, he had a significant meeting with the President where they discussed um, ways and means of um, strengthening the existing bilateral ties between the Gambia and India. The visit was significant for a few reasons. Number one, uh, this is the first time an Indian president is visiting the source of the Gambia. In fact, he is the highest level Indian official to ever visit the Gambia at that level. And during the visit too, um, the two leaders discussed extensively on expanding the already uh, strong ties between India and the Gambia. India and the Gambia has a long-standing relationship that dates back to the non-aligned movement. Uh, we have a very strong relationship as far as the Commonwealth and the United Nations. And also, India is a very strong development partner of the Gambia. They are involved in the funding of the National Assembly Building Complex in Banjul. And they are also investing heavily um, in the commercial and business um, subsector of the country. Um, Indians are involved in the area of casu production, rice production, and a host of um, other business um, endeavors in the country. So all in all, it was very good for um, the India-Gambia relations. Uh, the two leaders are committed. Um, to um, invest heavily um, in the relationship that the Gambia has with India. And most importantly, uh, India also agreed to um, reallocate a credit line of 92 million US dollars to the Gambia um, for roads infrastructure projects and other development projects in the country. So it was a very, very successful visit by every standard. Today is a historic day in the Gambia-India relations. It is an honor for me to be paying the first ever state visit from India to the Gambia. I am grateful to President Baro and the people of the Gambia for their exceptional warmth and hospitality. I was greeted with fraternal embrace and affection by the people of the Gambia on my arrival yesterday. I had fruitful discussions with President Baro. I felicitated him on his determination to foster greater democracy and inclusive growth in the Gambia and for the steps he is taking towards stability and nation building. We reviewed the entire spectrum of our bilateral relations and discussed regional and global issues of mutual interest. I conveyed India's deep commitment to enhance its traditional ties with the Gambia and contribute to its development. 
we agreed that we should expand our partnership in the spirit of south south cooperation for the progress prosperity and development of our peoples to further our bilateral agenda today we signed a memorandum of understanding on cooperation in the field of traditional systems of medicine and homeopathy as two ancient societies both our countries have much to offer to the world from the fields of ayurveda and other forms of traditional health practices we received the instrument of ratification of the international solar alliance framework agreement from the gambia this will open up new opportunities of collaboration between the two countries on solar energy and help in combating climate change to excellency president covid i'm just here to thank you and confirm this statement as we discuss wide range of issues but one issue is very important to we inherited a very difficult situation the country debt to gdp 120 debt to gdp become a big issue for us we are elected the people vote for you is a social contract because of that social contract we want to make impact in the life of the gambian people we want to make difference for the gambian people. but the debt is a big body and we appeal to india for debt relief we have discussed that at least they give us a debt relief for 5 years that will assist gambia to implement some of our projects because we are paying 60% tax we collect in this country to debt service for them but we want to assure you we will give you all the support we have been supporting in the international level we will continue to support you. we will want to partner with you in the development of both countries we want a situation that it will be a win win situation for india and gambia all right viewers this brings us to the end of this episode of the president's diary and do join us next month as we bring you more exciting engagements of the president i am zena fall and thank you for the pleasure of your company and i am fali federa do join us next for another presidential diary but before we run up since it's it season we would like to take this opportunity to wish all our viewers a blessed eid celebrations